great ideas don't make great movies. They can help, but great movies need events, right? And conflict and characters. And... What's your writing process? My writing process, um, it starts off with procrastination. And I gotta say this because every writer does it. Um, and it's terrible. I don't recommend it. But no, let, let's be honest. Writing starts off with uh, an idea, right? Um, and you get excited about this idea and you have to write it down. Again, I'm talking about writing on spec. Um, it's very different if you're coming in to write something or, you know, if there's a pre existing. Let's start off with writing on spec and then I'll answer the question separately if, you know, about writing uh, based on someone else's material. So if it's my own script, um, there's an idea. And uh, I'm very excited about it and I need to write it down and I need to capture it as best as I can, right? So I uh, usually might be on my computer or might be just um, handwritten, right? And I'll take a, a notebook and I'll start writing. Um, and of course, I'm very satisfied with that, but then you realize, okay, this idea is not the story, right? Everyone has a great idea, but then you have to break, down, break it down into characters and beats, and it's so much more complex. And of course, it will change, because idea, great ideas don't make great movies. They can help, but great movies need events, right? And conflict and characters and so on. Um, so you start breaking, at some point, you start breaking down a story, you get very frustrated because now it's real, right? Ideas are up there flying in the air, but then you're breaking it down and now it's, got, it's gotten real. So you start breaking it down um, and you explore characters separately. And if some people do backstory, I discover backstory as I go along. Some people start off from theme. I love theme, by the way. It's something I think about. I tend to I think of theme as a question. You know, some people some people will use words, right? Like um, um, love, uh, full potential, right? I don't know what to do with with those words, and you know, in terms of practical writing, like it's a story about love. Sure, I mean, but what do I do with that? So to me, themes are more more of a question, more of a specific question. Um, you know, it might be a movie about sports, but then the theme is um, how does it feel like to not be recognized by your father, right, for example. So, I mean, it's something I can relate to and then I can explore and the story is an answer to that question in a way. So, um, once I have the idea, I start breaking down separately character and backstory, um, the world, right. Um, if it's period, I have to do research. Um, and I love research. Um, I actually love it so much that I would spend my entire life just doing research. I, I love going to reading books, watching movies, going to library. You know, sometimes great. Uh, the New York Public Library has an amazing archive and you go there in the back with your little gloves and then you just spend hours going through original letters and I, I had a blast doing that. So research, not too much because at some point it can drive you mad. So at some point you got to stop with research and start um, making things up. And once you have like the world, the characters, the beats, and now you're ready to start writing. Um, if it's, you know, if it's based on someone else's material, then, um, well, I guess instead of coming up with the beats, you're trying to find those beats in the book or the source material. And the characters, the beauty of, of adaptations is that characters are a given. You know, still, it doesn't mean that you're going to take everything in there. You got to learn what to take and what to discard, of course. Um, a friend uh, who's a producer the other day was telling me that um, movies are not novels. Movies are short stories um, and, and short films are like poems. So, you know, there's not a lot of beats in a movie. Even if you're doing a three hour long movie, there's not an infinite amount of beats. Novels have so much material that you got to weed out what stays and what goes. Um, so it might seem like you have a lot of, you know, um, real estate to, to develop your story, but you don't. Um, an average 100 minute movie is, I'd say about 36 to 40 beats, maybe, maybe more if it's really fast paced. 
but you only have a certain amount of, of scenes. In a 90-minute script, you know, you have 33-minute scenes. Again, it's not math, but you know what I'm saying is you really got to pick what you're going to focus on. It doesn't matter if it's an adaptation or your own work. For your script regarding Timothy Leary, since he had such a vast, long life, um, I'm not sure when he passed away. He took his life, correct? He died in, yeah, in the late 90s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he was already um, in his 80s. Okay. Um, sure. How did you know what you what time period, or did what did you cover most of it? Well, actually, it took me several drafts to figure that out. Um, I knew it had to start in the '60s. The first draft I wrote of the script started in 1963, which is when he gets kicked out of Harvard uh, because he gave students uh, psilocybin and LSD. Um, but then I realized I had to go back. I had to start it off in 1960, which is when he gets hired at Harvard. Harvard because it's, he's 40 years old, uh, he's going through a middle age crisis, his wife, first wife has just committed suicide recently. No one knows about this. So I figured, you know, I gotta start at the beginning. And sometimes it's not easy to know where the beginning is. Um, it's really up to you. So I actually wrote, I think, like two drafts that took place in 63, then I went back to 1960, which is the current version. Um, and then the beauty of it is you can have at least five or six seasons if you wanted, because every stage of his life is a different, whole different thing. Harvard, uh, California, New York, Afghanistan, uh, Switzerland. You know. um, but only, I mean, I wrote the first draft based on the book, and then I went to the public uh, library in New York where there are, are approximately 463, I think, boxes of his belongings, oh, wow. his personal archive. And I, you know, I rifled through that and, and I didn't get to all the boxes, by the way, because that's insanity. Um, I did go through a lot of them over several trips. And, you know, it was, there's nothing I like better than spending time with, you know, studying original sources. Right. And then he had a subsequent relationship with someone that he cared very deeply for, didn't he? But it's debatable whether she was hired well, oh. to spy on him. Or? Um, oh, there was a documentary that came out recently by Errol Morris. I think it's his, his fourth wife, Joanna Harcourt Smith. Um, Leary had several wives. Um, well, there was a whole debate I had with the producer who was uh, who's a friend of mine and who was convinced that Lear was a saint. And I had to tell him, um, no, he was, this man was incredibly flawed, very responsible. Um, we, I think he's our way into the counterculture and telling that whole story. I don't think we should use this man as an example of anything because he, he, for, for decades he talked about the death of ego and he had nothing but ego, actually, he was married to, I think, five amazing women, and he disrespected all of them, and he could never, you know, he could never love them the way they loved him, and it's actually tragic. I know, I mean, I hope none of the fans, Larry's fans are listening because they're gonna kill me, but um, I think he's a very contradictory man, um, very, you know, he had the, the, he had the charm, he could lure people in, um, he's very smart, um, but I think the, the, the one in that relationship, the one who actually transcended all that was Richard Alpert, who became Ramdas. So in the show we have uh, Leary, who's, uh, who's a voice of this whole movement, but in a way I feel like he's disingenuous. And you have Ramdas, who actually did go to India and transcend ego and became this beautiful being. 